Hey everyone, <clears throat> welcome back for another YouTube Live. I'm Dr. Sean Tassone, America's Holistic Gynecologist, author of the Hormone Balance Bible, and also the podcaster behind Confessions of a Male Gynecologist, which comes out with a new episode every Thursday. I do these YouTube Lives every day and basically talk about <clears throat> hormones and hormone balancing. And today I wanted to talk about probably one of the best hormones out there, meaning that it probably has the least side effects. It has some of the most beneficial aspects to hormone replacement. And yet so many women aren't put on this hormone for various reasons. I just thought it would be a good idea to come on here and talk about progesterone. Progesterone is a hormone that is made mostly from the corpus luteum. So when you ovulate every month, a cyst grows, ruptures, releases the egg, and then the cells that line that cyst start making progesterone. Progesterone is also made by the placenta usually after about 10 weeks gestation. So right around 10 weeks, two and a half months pregnancy, the progesterone will start making its own, or the corpus luteum will start making its own progesterone. So in my book, The Hormone Balance Bible, which you can go over and get on Amazon, it's uh, $15. I think they're almost 50% off right now. I talk about progesterone deficiency as the unbalanced heroin. And the reason that I call progesterone the unbalanced heroin is because if you think of what progesterone does, it is responsible for pregnancy. And when I looked at pregnancy and I looked at the hero's journey, a la Joseph Campbell, I figured, well, this is a heroine's journey, obviously. And so when your progesterone is off, there's a lot of other things that are off. Now, I want to dispel a few myths around progesterone. One being that you should only use progesterone um, or you don't need progesterone if you've had a hysterectomy. Now, when doctors tell you that, when they tell you, oh, I'll put you on estrogen, but you don't need progesterone because you've had, a, you've had your uterus removed, that's right and wrong. It's right because you don't need uh, progesterone to protect your uterus against uterine cancer because you don't have a uterus. However, what they're doing is negating all the other benefits that progesterone has, like sleep, like calmness, um, decreased anxiety, uh, diuresis. I mean, it has a lot of uh, positive aspects that when they, that they're basically saying, oh, you don't need any of those. We just worry about uterine cancer. So there's a lot of protective benefits that progesterone has. The other thing is progesterones, another myth, progesterones are not the same as progestins. Uh, progestins are those fake progesterones like Provera, Levonorgestrel, Medroxyprogesterone, norgestrel, all the birth control pills. Micronized progesterone is the bioidentical progesterone. Another myth is that progesterone absolutely positively um, protects against breast cancer. This has been propagated by some folks out there in the alternative community, especially some naturopaths who I won't name, but it does a lot of the time have that effect. However, there are many breast cancers that are progesterone receptor positive. So it's not always protective and in some cases could stimulate um, a cancer cell growth. Again, not a cause, but it could stimulate that. So what does progesterone, first of all, what are the symptoms of low progesterone? Well, let me tell you, number one, far and away, insomnia. How many women out there right now have issues with insomnia? And feel free to drop a question in the chat box. I usually get to those at the end of the talk. But how many of you out there right now suffer with insomnia? I think I can hear you from here. Um, insomnia is rampant, rampant in a lot of women, most age groups. However, 35 plus, 40 plus for sure, start having insomnia. Another thing that progesterone does is it um, low progesterone, those women tend to have more anxiety more irritability, and they just feel more on edge. Um, that is very, very common. And that's probably why 
many, many women, when they go into their GYN or their FP, are put on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications rather than fixing the hormone deficiency. Now, it makes absolutely no sense to put somebody on Prozac that's having anxiety that's related to low progesterone. The problem is they won't even consider progesterone as an option. So you need to vet those people yourselves. So low progesterone, insomnia, anxiety, irritability. Um, I know people don't like it when I swear, but it's, um, I had a patient once call it, I feel like I want to choke a bitch. So that's low progesterone. Um, you just feel like you want to choke someone out. Uh, a good example, patient example. I had a lady come in. She had three kids under the age of 12. And she said, I'm just yelling at my kids all the time. I'm, uh, and I said, well, I have four. I get that. But she said it was just kind of inappropriate. Somebody spilled something the other day. And she spun around and she just started yelling at everybody. And she said, I just feel horrible when I do that because that's my initial reaction. I just go. I just want to, I want to fight. That's low progesterone. So we fixed everything. We put her on progesterone. She came back at her five-week follow-up, and she said, same thing happened. I'm in the kitchen doing something on the stove, and I hear this glass break. I spin around, and as I spun around, I saw my kids brace for impact. And my immediate response was, oh, don't worry about it, honey. I'll get that. And she said, the 12-year-old said, what have you done with my mother? That's progesterone. That... The fact that she didn't fly off the handle and instead went to this, oh, God, don't worry about it. That's normal. What she was feeling before for her wasn't normal. And like I said, sometimes you you need to respond to people. I mean, they deserve it and they need it. But that's progesterone. That's low progesterone. So when you take progesterone, you definitely want to look for micronized progesterone. Now, micronized progesterone at CVS, Walgreens, Costco, all those places, Walmart, there's two doses available. There's 100 milligrams and there's 200 milligrams. It's a capsule. You swallow it at bedtime. If you need any dose outside of 100 or 200, then you have to have it compounded. And it's going to cost more because for most women, it is covered by your insurance. And it's great. It's uh, the side effects when you start progesterone can be breast sensitivity, breast tenderness, um, abnormal spotting. Usually those things go away after a few weeks, but when you start the medication, that can be something that definitely follows. Um, yeah, Cheryl says some, but many of my clients are up in the middle of the night. I mean, I can't tell you. If I see 10 new patients in a day, probably eight of them have insomnia or anxiety. It's really rampant, very common, and they're all offered antidepressants. And it's not an issue of being depressed or serotonin per se or dopamine. They just don't have... Progesterone breaks down into a metabolite called allopregnenolone. Allopregnenolone will upregulate a receptor in the brain called GABA. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but GABA basically calms you down when it's stimulated. GABA is increased after you eat... Um, turkey from tryptophan and things like that. So most of the sleep supplements that you buy will have a 5-HTP or something along that, and that's because it helps with GABA. Yes, this is what is frustrating. They are just expensive. Well, the thing about progesterone, and I don't know what you mean by who's expensive, but progesterone should be relatively inexpensive. Now, there is a national shortage of progesterone right now. I don't know why. I think it's because of all these fly-by-night uh, online programs that are just prescribing things for everybody, and probably inappropriately so, or there's more women out there demanding hormones, which is great. Um, either way, um, I do think it's a, uh, there is a national shortage, so you might have to shop around. Um, let's see. Insomnia is a huge issue. Thank you for enlightening, of course. Uh, sleeping through the night is an issue, even with progesterone. And so progesterone, see, this is the thing. Sleep is so multifaceted, right? Progesterone can help you fall asleep. But if you have this issue, if you wake up, I do this. You wake up in the middle of the night and you you try to guess what time it is, right? It's like 3.20. And then I'll say, Alexa, 
what time is it? And she'll say 3.42. So if you're within the ballpark, that's habit. That's just your body is just used to that. Um, or maybe somebody drove by and honked the horn or something, but it's usually habit-based. Usually in those instances, I will tell people to buy a supplement called Herbatonin from Symphony and get the 0.3 milligram dose. It's a tiny little dose. I usually tell people, take that when you wake up, take one or two of those, and it might help you get back to sleep. Um, let's see, what's this say? 64 and postmenopause can assume I have zero hormones. Is there is there any still working out? I mean, do you have hormones in your body? Yeah. I mean, you have to. Um, you have thyroid and cortisol or you would be dead. Um, progesterone is probably zero. Estrogen is probably zero. Um, testosterone is probably not zero because 50% of your testosterone is made from the adrenal gland and some of it is a conversion factor from DHEA and your your estrogen may not be zero if you're if you're overweight and you have a lot of adipose or fat tissue because the fat cells can actually make estrogen so um, remember you can always get started everybody always asks me there's so much information I don't know where to get started what do I do head over to Amazon get a copy of the hormone balance Bible Go to my website, tassonmd.com backslash quiz. Take the quiz. It's not the same as getting your blood drawn totally. I get that. But it gives you a place to start. So um, keep that in mind. And then um, I'll be here every day uh, talking about different hormones. Go to Confessions of a Male Gynecologist. I have all the hormones, have multiple episodes. Um, you can do more deep dives there. You can reach out to me in Austin, 512-956-0296, and follow me on Instagram. My second pinned post on Instagram actually talks about all the states where I'm licensed. So if I'm licensed in one of those states, I can see you. Have a great Sunday. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here if you need me.